So super excited, everybody. Welcome to tonight's webinar, how to select the best tax and legal structure for your investments. Uh, we're super excited to have Preston Knight on tonight with us. Uh, if you listen to our previous conversation as we started, it, uh, it's just one of my passions, one of Preston's passions, the different investment opportunities out there. And there's so many new investment opportunities. And you obviously you want to be careful, do do your due diligence. Uh, background on everything you do. But the cool thing is with new investment opportunities come different ways of protecting those investments. You got to look at that and Preston's good at that. And also different tax strategies, long-term, short-term, you know, there's different ways of looking at these assets and, and a new strategy comes out all the time, especially when it comes to, I think, electronic you know, different kind of investments. And there's some strategies there, long-term, short-term, how to avoid capital gains. It's just really cool. So uh, there's more to come and I'm sure more regulation, but uh, more, we call them loopholes, but I mean, Congress passes a lot of these laws to their benefit because they too hold crypto. So we'll see some of this coming down the pipeline. I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> excited about it. There was always some good ways to deal with it. So excited about tonight's webinar. Uh, let's make sure we go here. Um, and just as everyone knows, this is a ongoing webinar series that we do pretty consistently. Um, it, it really is just meant to provide good quality education on different strategies. And we do post these on YouTube generally for about 30 days. So if you miss it, we will have a recording. If you miss some content, just watch for that. You know, it's generally on there for 30 days. Go to our YouTube channel. We always suggest you subscribe. That way you get the notification when you actually get a, a new posting from us. So watch for that. And then, of course, we always mention our upcoming three-day Asset Protection and Wealth Creation Summit. This is our premier event. We've been doing this for 20-plus years, and I know I'm biased, but you can look for yourself and go look at Google reviews, Facebook reviews. I'm not kidding when I say you're going to be hard pressed to find any better glowing reviews about anything out there on legal and finance. And that is the truth. There is amazing, incredible reviews from you out there because it, I mean, for us, it's simple. We're providing quality education with the top experts, attorneys, investors in the nation like Preston. So we're super excited about tonight's topic. And, uh, you know, I'll suggest if you have any interest, register at protectwealth.com for our three-day asset protection summit. It's free and it's on live stream. So really, Watch from your office, watch from the car. It's a good thing. Now, we, we do a lot of things on Facebook too. So make sure you look us up on Facebook. We always mention our new tax tips and different things we do there. And of course, maybe you have a legal disclaimer, Preston, but we always mention this. <laughs> we are an asset protection company after all, but we're not giving specific legal tax or financial advice. Seek out competent professionals like someone at Anderson or Preston himself, maybe. So again, how to select the best tax and legal structure for your investments with Preston Knight. He's a uh, advisor at Anderson Advisor, a senior legal advisor. Uh, and it's been fun to get to know you a little bit, Preston. Uh, we're both here in Utah, which I know not, not all Anderson attorneys are in Utah. You're all spread out across the country, but it's cool to get to know you here. At least it's cool. We, we know the area a little bit. And you know, I, I love it because uh, Preston's got a lot of good knowledge. I can tell uh, is super experienced with the tax and legal side, which we, we we love, but also the, like I mentioned, the digital, crypto, you know, different type of investments out there that are really important. And whether you like it or not, will be a big part of all of our futures. And so you have to be knowledgeable about those different assets and investment strategies and how to protect them. So I know you'll cover a bunch of those different strategies, Preston. But uh, we're super excited to have you on, and, and we appreciate you being here and sharing your expertise. So, Preston, if it's okay, I'll turn it over to you. You can go ahead and share your screen. And then if you'd like, uh, I assume you want to do Q&A at the end, right? Yeah, the plan was Q&A at the end. But if we want to um, have Q&As pop in, I'll try and keep an eye on it and maybe address them as we're going. Uh, that way it's directly relevant to what we're talking about. So definitely, you know, as you're watching and listening, pop your questions in the, are we going to use the Q&A? Yeah. So we do use Q&A chat. So everybody knows is disabled just because that's how we use to communicate with you. But uh, for Q&A, if you have questions, guys, jump in Q&A. We'll try to get to them as uh, if they come in and at the end. 
Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So I'll try and keep an eye on that as we go. So if you see me looking to the left, that's where the Q&A is in my Zoom screen. Uh, my presentation's here. Uh, just so you guys know, I'm not ignoring what's going on. Uh, but yeah, let me get this pulled up here. I want to share... Thank you so much, Preston. I'm super excited about it. And our group, honestly, very, very good at asking questions. So, you know, I think traditionally, most of our instructors answer questions, you know, as we go in your presentation anyway. So, you know, yeah, any questions yeah. that, that aren't specific, ask away, guys. We're excited to have you on. Thank you. I'll be in the background if you need me. Wonderful. Wonderful. So, um, yeah, I as, as Kendall said, my name is Preston Knight. I'm a senior attorney here at Anderson Business Advisors. I was asked to come and talk to you guys tonight about uh, how to set up your investing business. And tonight we're really going to focus on investing in more like your, your stocks or, or ETFs or mutual funds, those types of investments. Um, that's going to be the focus tonight. Cryptocurrency is my passion. It's my hobby. It's what I spend a lot of my personal time on, probably too much if you ask my wife, but she's not here, so we can't worry about that. Um, and luckily, she's not going to watch this. I'm not going to give her the link. But anyway, um, so yeah, we're going to talk about that and how to structure it, structure it for the best protection legally and the best tax treatment um, and, and really kind of give you guys an idea of, of how to move forward in your investing business. This is me. Uh, just quickly, uh, I've been an investor in real estate for, well, since 2011. So what are we at? 12 years now. Um, investing in stocks and bonds since I was in the military in 2009 and really, really jumped into cryptocurrency mostly in 2020. I knew about it before that, dabbled a little bit, but really jumped in in 2020 and, and and went all the way. Um, I'm here at Anderson Business Advisors. I am the go-to guy for crypto questions. So if you're already an Anderson client and you have crypto questions, you most likely you'll ask your advisor and they'll come to me. Um, and uh, as far as your asset protection structure, all of our attorneys are fantastic um, and we can help out. Yes, disclaimer, I am an attorney, but I am not your attorney. So everything that we're talking about tonight, these are general guidance, general structures, and everybody's situation is different. Um, it doesn't matter if your neighbors and you drive the same car, live in the same house, your situation is different than your neighbors because you have different goals and aspirations. So take this as general guidance, but not specific instruction for you. And I am not a financial advisor. I do not hold those licenses. I am an attorney. Um, and again, not your attorney. So that's the legal disclaimer. All right, so tonight's training, um, I do wanna get a little bit interactive, so definitely put your questions in the Q&A section. Um, I'm not gonna ask, you know, where are y'all from? Because if chat's disabled, that would be the place for it, so we're not gonna worry about that kind of thing. Um, but definitely come with your questions. Um, I really wanna address those. That makes it more interactive and better for everyone. So if, if you come and you participate and give me questions, I will, try and deliver the greatest amount of value I can in the time we have together this evening. So make sure and put that in there as we're going. I'll probably cover a lot of them, but we'll definitely get them answered. So tonight we're gonna talk about, hey, what kind of business or what kind of structure do you need? What kind of business are you even thinking about running? Maybe it's just a buy and hold kind of business. Maybe it's a, I'm gonna be trading. Maybe it's gonna be, I'm gonna be, be very active. We'll talk about those things. We're going to talk about how to protect your assets from people that might want to take them away from you. Believe it or not, there's a lot of attorneys out there, personal injury attorneys, that want to take away your assets. How do we protect it? Uh, I don't know if you've driven down any major highway in any major city, especially Las Vegas, 90% of the billboards are personal injury attorneys. We're going to talk a little bit about tax structuring. Um, that one I will dabble in but you need to talk with your personal tax advisor on that just because they're gonna know your situation. I don't know your situation, but we'll talk about some general principles when it comes to tax. We're gonna hit something that I'm very passionate about and that's avoiding the scammers out there. There's so many both on the crypto side and the non-crypto side that you really need to be careful where you invest. 
I actually worked for the Securities and Exchange Commission before I was with Anderson as a law clerk. And I saw so many people get scammed. A lot of times it was by their neighbors. So be careful. We'll talk about a couple of those things. And then last but not least, probably you should be the first topic, but we leave it till the end. Uh, we're going to talk about leaving a legacy how important it is to make sure that you are structured properly so you can pass on the wealth that you have created to that next generation. So again, like I said, be interactive, ask your questions. We're gonna do what we can to get them all answered in the time we have together. My goal for you is to give you a few nuggets, a few important thought points to make sure that you're setting up your business the best you can for your future. All right, with that, let's jump in. All right. First question, what kind of business are you running? You got to ask yourself that. Like, hey, am I running a business that's going to be actively trading? Am I going to try to hit the trader status? Which, by the way, is not in the IRS code. It is something that came from case law and you have to be very, very, very careful about. And we don't recommend trying to attain that. So if you have questions on trader status, Toby Mathis did a great video check it out on his YouTube channel. We're not going to jump too far into it, but essentially you have to do more than 750 trades. It has to be your primary vocation. You have to make most of your money doing it that way. It has to be substantial. It's actually a business and you can't have long-term holds. So there, there's lots of issues with that. And I'm assuming that most people on this webinar are not trying for that. You're just trying to invest a little bit of extra side income, maybe that infinity income that Toby talks about a lot. So, are you going to be trading a lot, a little bit? I don't know, but we'll talk about how to structure that. If you're into crypto, are you going to be mining? I mean, maybe, maybe it's worth it now. Maybe not. I don't know. Are you just going to be buying and holding, doing a couple of trades here and there, buying mostly mutual funds or, or ETFs or a few select stocks, that kind of thing? Then it doesn't have to be super complicated. Or maybe you're going to do a little bit of all of it. I don't know something to think about. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to my whiteboard and we're gonna kind of address these starting with the most basic, just the buying and holding and we're gonna build from there. So you'll see as we're going along this evening, we're gonna take a really, really, really basic structure and we're gonna build, in, build onto it to make sure that we take advantage of the tax code and the asset protection and have your structure built the way it should be. All right, so I'm gonna switch over to the whiteboard. All right, now I gotta find my pen on my desk. All right, found it, okay. So um, on the whiteboard here, I'm just gonna draw something out. So we're gonna start with somebody who just wants to buy and hold. And this could be, again, hey, I just have a brokerage account. And you know, maybe I do two or three trades a month, but most of the time it's just sitting there, I'm putting money into it. I selected like, hey, you know, I wanna go into a targeted account or into an ETF or, you know, select dividend paying stocks, where should I put that? You know, in your own name, is it the best way? No. You want to put it into a business entity that has a business purpose to kind of separate it from you. So um, what we normally do is we set up an LLC. Now this LLC that's going to hold your mutual funds, or your brokerage accounts. It's gonna be kind of the foundation of your business, right? This is where you're gonna put all of your money that you don't need to pay your daily bills. Now it could be in cash or again, into the like a Fidelity account or something like that, but everything is gonna go in here. And this is gonna be really the foundation, the basic building block of everything else. So this LLC might be a partnership or it might be disregarded. And that really depends on your personal tax status. So you might have just you or you and a spouse maybe down here. So this might be a partnership. And this is just the basic structure. Now, what you're doing by putting your, your Fidelity account into this LLC is you're removing it from your personal ownership. You're saying, I don't own it. The LLC owns it. And that is great for the legal protections that the LLC has. And we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in, on the next slide. Um, but it really is important to have that distinction between you and, and that Fidelity account. Because if you have a million dollar Fidelity account in your name, it's at risk and you got to watch out. 
All right. So this is really just the basic structure. So if you're just buying and holding, doing a couple trades every once in a while, you might want to do something like this. Now, if you're going to be a little bit more active, say, hey, you know what? I really want to get more active. I want to get into this trading thing. I want to make it more of a side hustle than just a invest for retirement or, or long-term gains. Well, that's when it gets a little bit more complicated because you're going to have some expenses. Expenses like charting accounts, maybe new computer equipment, uh, subscriptions to newsletters, uh, extra trading fees or fees for a, a better account that gets you better access, those kinds of things. Now, generally, in just this basic structure that we have drawn right now, those kinds of fees, there's no place to deduct them because all of this income right now, if it's disregarded or a partnership is going to flow down to your 1040. And in 2017, Tax Cut and Jobs Act, they did away with Schedule A miscellaneous deductions, which is where all of those expenses would go. So you might have all these expenses for your charting accounts or, hey, I need a new computer or, or those kinds of things, but there's no place to actually put those on your 1040. So you lose those deductions. So if you are going to get active, well, we have a solution for you. Where do you put those expenses? What we do, I'm going to change colors here, is we give you a new partner. We give you a C corporation. And what we do with that is we make this a partnership. Now, the other key, and this is important, is there is a guaranteed payment to partner. A guaranteed payment to partner. Now that guaranteed payment, what that does is it says every single month, no matter what, if this LLC makes money or not, I am going to pay my partner $500, whatever it, whatever it needs to be. And you reverse engineer this. So you're going to have money flowing every single month, guaranteed payment to partner. And then the C corporation is going to pay the expenses. So the C corporation gets to write it off as an expense. Oops. If I can spell and erase, come on. Anyway, you get the idea. C Corporation is going to write off the expense. My whiteboard froze. That's unfortunate. All right, we'll try the whiteboard again. Maybe this will work. Okay. So the C Corporation is going to write off the expense. And then the LLC doesn't have that extra income. So basically what you're able to do is actually deduct from your income, from your trading income, that expense for the new computers or the charting accounts, and you just run it through the corporation. The great thing about the corporation is it has some other benefits as well. If this is the only corporation you have, you can do what's called an accountable plan, and you can have the corporation pay for amazing things like your out-of-pocket medical expenses or reimburse you for use of your home office or those kinds of things. We'll talk about it a little bit more in the, in the tax section, but the C corporation can be your tax savings tool. This one is very important for tax savings, all right? So, which is just absolutely fantastic. All right, let me just look at the questions here. All right. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of building it on. So that's if you're going to be like actively trading. Now, if you're going to do a combination, obviously you would still want to set it up this way. You have this partnership. This partnership right here is going to be super important. That way you are able to write off those expenses. But also there's one other thing. The partnership files a 1065 tax return and issues a K-1 to each partner. So you'd get a K-1 to the corporation and a K-1 to the LLC, which flows down to you. So maybe you don't have a spouse or you wanted the LLC to be disregarded. This is also gonna help here because this K-1 is gonna flow down to your 1040, which puts it on schedule E, schedule E of your tax return on page two, which helps you for lending purposes. So if you are a real estate investor as well, it helps you qualify for those extra loans, which is awesome.
So uh, it's very, very beneficial to set something up like this with the corporation as a partner. Now, there's obviously, this is kind of the basic structure and everybody's is a little bit different, but you can use this, corpor this corporation for other things as well. So if you're a real estate investor, and if you follow Anderson at all, you know that we like to put real estate over here in this separate box and we put a little house over here. Well, now our corporation can have a management agreement and manage this rental property, which is fantastic. So we're getting a little bit of money here, a little bit of money into the corporation and the rest flows down through the rest of your structure. And we can, there's lots of videos that um, Clint Coons does about this um, and check it out on YouTube because we're not going to go too much into real estate tonight, but a little bit of, of a management fee in here. So you use that for managing your real estate. You can use it for, if you have like a, another side hustle, you run a photography business or you uh, have a dog food business or whatever it happens to be. You can use this C Corp for a lot of those kinds of things to get more money in there, depending on your tax bracket, right? Um, without jumping too far ahead. So um, it really is like this C Corp is such a fantastic tool that a lot of people don't use because they don't think about it. They're like, well, why do I need a C corporation? It's double taxation and all this stuff. But if you use it right, it can really, really help you as you move forward in your investing. I'm going to look here, see if we have any specific questions about structuring. Why not have a C-Corp only? That's a great question. Uh, C-Corp only, if everything's held in the C-Corporation, as opposed to in the, the brokerage account would be down here in the LLC, right? If everything is held in the C-Corporation, then that's where you get to the double taxation, right? Um, so the C-Corp would pay tax at 21% on anything that's left over after expenses. And then if you wanted money out of it, you're going to pay tax again on the dividend distribution. That's the double taxation, right? Um, whereas the, the partnership, the LLC tax is a partnership here. That is going to flow through to your 1040 after the K-1, right? So th this K-1 is going to flow all the way down to your 1040 Schedule E. And the nice thing about that is if is passive income like dividends or, or capital gains, you're not going to pay self-employment tax. So why not just a C-Corp because you don't want that double taxation. And again, it could make sense if you're in this super high tax brackets. And if it, if you are, then definitely talk to us and we'll talk through it and see what's best for you. But this is kind of a general thing. Is a C-Corp worth the expense if you're a small business? Maybe. Yeah, if you're able to reimburse or avoid some taxes or get some expenses that you might not have, some of those subscription, like monthly fees, are a couple hundred dollars a month. So while you'll have the extra tax return at the corporate level, um, if you're able to write off five or ten thousand dollars a year in expenses, then yeah, I would say so. I would say it's worth it. And then if you're able to get other monies into the corporation, use it to manage your real estate or something like that, and you're able to do a reimbursement for home office or pay for other business-related expenses, yeah, it can absolutely be worth it. So um, any out-of-pocket medical expenses, the corporation can, as long as you adopt an accountable plan and understand that if you own another business, that has employees, the same rules apply to them. So you can't distinguish, say, well, I have this business over here and it reimburses for medical expenses. And I have this business over here that has employees and we don't. You're not able to do that. It has to be equal across all of the businesses that you own, just so you know. Let's see. Uh, Roth IRA. So an IRA is a business, is a trust. It's a retirement trust and Roth is, is after tax, which is fantastic. So it sounds like you're doing it right with that. You don't have to worry about this kind of stuff. Um, but like your subscription services, the Roth isn't going to be able to pay for and, and those kinds of things. So if you are trading inside of a Roth IRA, you're not able to really take advantage of the expenses, but um, you know, there's no tax, right? Cause it's Roth. So you already paid the tax on it and any growth you get in the future is 
tax-free, which is fantastic. So um, it, it's very different. But um, if you are interested in other kinds of investments with your Roth IRA, say real estate, um, and buy a rental property and put it in there, uh, we can definitely talk with you about that. So can there be a business only to invest? Absolutely. Uh, Schwab, Fidelity, Ameritrade. I mean, they sell investments to other people, but it's mostly just their investments. HSAs, uh, C Corp can, well, you can do a HSA. We're not going to go too far into that tonight. It's just, uh, that one's a, a very complex topic. LLC to S Corporation. We'll talk about that some in a little bit. All right. All right. So I think we're caught up on questions as we go. So, all right. So let's go jump over to the next slide here. All right. So really, you know, it's important to take everything as a holistic approach. You want to look at it from every angle you possibly can. I'm a recovering litigation attorney, and I always take the approach of from the other side. Where are the holes? Where can I attack? How can I get through whatever defenses the other person put up? Or maybe that I put up, how can they get through it? Um, I think it's really important to have that holistic approach. So we're not just thinking about tax, which is important, but we're also thinking about the liability. Now, what liability does a stock portfolio have? Is, your, is it going to fall out of cyberspace and break somebody's leg? Absolutely not. There's no, there's no inside liability inside a stock portfolio. So when I'm talking about liability, you're probably like, Preston, I don't care about this. It doesn't matter. There's no liability. But what I'm talking about, the other angle, how can we protect your investments from you? You are the biggest liability when it comes to your stock portfolio or syndication investments or cash or crypto, because those things aren't going to cause you any kind of liability from inside, but you could potentially put them at risk from the outside. So it really is, it's another direction, another piece of the puzzle that you have to think about is, okay, in the US right now, most people think how is the easiest, quickest way to get rich? First way, win the lottery. Somebody in California just won over a billion dollars. That's awesome, good for them, congrats. Chances of getting struck by lightning 10 times and living are higher than actually winning the lottery. So what's the second way? Find somebody who has something that you want and sue them for it. Again, think about all of the billboards down the interstates in all of the major cities with attorney's faces going on them. One call, that's all. That's all that matters, right? So they're looking to sue somebody and take away what you've worked really hard to build. So let's talk about that just a little bit. I'm going to pull up my diagram and this one's getting a little messy. So we're going to move to a nice clean section of the, of the screen. All right. So I'm going to draw out our, our LLC again. We're going to do it in blue. So we have our LLC sitting right here. Much better handwriting that time as well. All right. So inside it, we have our money whether it be in stocks, bonds, dividends, crypto, syndications, whatever. That's not going to cause us any liability. Where's the liability come from? Let's change to a nice red color because that's exciting. Liability is coming from the outside. And who is your biggest liability? Excuse my stick figures, but I did not go to art school. I went to law school. Uh, it's you. Now, the obvious ones are the car accidents, right? Okay, but what are the chances that you're going to run into that one guy who is a neurosurgeon and they're going to sue you for $20 million? And that's a way above and beyond your car insurance. I mean, maybe, but maybe not. But there's other things to think about too. What if you got into a real estate deal and you had to walk away? Like, hey, you know, I put my earnest money down, but I walked away. In this market right now, people are suing to enforce those contracts. They're gonna make you go through with that deal. And if not, they're gonna sue you for a total amount of damages. 
hey, maybe you started a business and you signed a 10 year lease and the business collapses after one or two years because you started a spaghetti company. I don't know. We have 10 years left on your lease. And the, the landlord's like, hey, guess what? It's hard to fill those commercial leases right now. So I'm going to sue you for the total amount of rent for 10 years. That's a big judgment. Or you have an employee working for you or with you and they want to sue you. Or you're a doctor and they name you personally in a lawsuit. Or, or, or I could go on and on and on. There's all kinds of different events that could happen in our lives that put a big target on our back for people that want to take our money from us. So let's remove that money from our name. Let's put it in something safe. So you want to put it in an LLC. Now, this LLC needs to have what's called charging order protections. I wrote it out because it's important. Charging order protections. And it needs to have strong charging order protections. There are some states out there, and I'm going to paraphrase the law because... It's long and complicated, but I'll give you the, you know, the shortened version. California and Colorado have charging order protections for their LLCs. Those charging order protections basically say the exclusive remedy for a creditor that obtains a judgment against a defendant is a charging order against this LLC, unless it takes too long to collect, and then we can foreclose on your membership interest, meaning they can take it away from you. Now, what is a charging order? A charging order is essentially a lien on distributions, keyword distributions. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want somebody to sue me and get a charging order and then me figure out a way to not pay them. And then all of a sudden they just foreclose on my membership interest. So you have to find the right state to do it in. Uh, Colorado, California, I'm sorry, it's not the right state. Um, we use three different states, depending on your situation. It could be Nevada, it could be Wyoming, it could be Delaware. Um, again, it just depends on your specific circumstances. So talking with an advisor is a really, really good idea. Um, but those states, all three provide one anonymity. So nobody knows that you own it unless you get sued and two very strong charging order protections. In fact, there's a case in Wyoming, which we like the most saying that not only if a creditor goes to Wyoming and obtains a charging order against your LLC, they act, you could say, hey, I'm not distributing any money, distributions, but they still have to pay the tax on the income that the LLC makes. Because why not, right? So Wyoming's awesome. Now, those are very specific circumstances and it really depends, but that can happen where your creditor is paying the taxes and not getting paid. So would they want to go try to obtain this charging order? Probably not. Most people avoid going to Wyoming because they have to travel there. They have to obtain the judgment. They enforce the charging order and then they have to wait to get paid. If your LLC is written correctly, you don't have to do distributions. You don't have to do distributions. And that gives you the option to say, guess what, creditor? You got the lien, but I'm not distributing any money. How do you get money out? Well, you could take a W-2 wage. You could take a loan to member. Companies do that all the time a 50 year balloon payment. I don't know, they get creative if they actually go to Wyoming to get a charging order, which almost never happens. Anyway, so really when we're thinking about it, yeah, there's no liability inside. This is, this is no liability there. You are the liability. So take that bullseye off your back and say, hey, guess what? I don't own anything, you can't take anything from me. That's the idea, that's the plan. I mean, if you're gonna be driving around you know, Main Street in a $180,000 supercar, you're kind of putting a bullseye on your back, so be careful. But if you're driving your you know, Honda CRV, nobody's gonna know and they're not gonna come after you. Anyway, let's look at some questions. Can a taxable IRA put into LLC or corp to buy real estate without triggering early tax? Um, your IRA can own an LLC to buy real estate. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean, Rich, by taxable. Uh, I have an LLC set up with my partner in Maryland. Rental home, also the same partner, an LLC in Texas with another uh, rental real estate 
currently both are LLC in Maryland and Texas. Can these be advised? So um, if you wanted to use a corporation for your rental properties, it would just be a management company. Sounds like you're almost there. Uh, generally, what we would say is set up a holding company that gives you anonymity and the charging order protections to hold like to own the LLCs that own your properties. Texas is okay. Uh, they have good protections there. There's just no anonymity. Um, Maryland is one of those kind of like purple states that leans kind of blue. And so they're more tenant friendly, less landlord friendly. So I would definitely talk about how we could structure it and move those existing LLCs into something else. Uh, medical reimbursement. Uh, that wife and I must become employees. So for the medical reimbursement through the C corporation, and we'll talk about that uh, here in a, well, really the next slide, it, it's more of a tax question, but we can jump there now. Uh, anyway, medical reimbursement. It's, you can be working exclusively in your trading business or your real estate business or, you know, your dog food business, whatever you're doing. And it's going through the corporation. As long as you don't have other employees, like let's say your spouse has a great W-2 job, like this guy, I work for Anderson, my wife runs our business. Um, if we didn't have any employees, then she could actually request reimbursement from our corporation for our out-of-pocket medical expenses, including uh, what I pay out of my paycheck every month for the premiums, including the co-pays, including our monthly uh, prescription payments, all of those things. So it can be very, very beneficial. And as long as you don't have other employees, it can be amazing benefit. So definitely think about that. Uh, how do I... How active do you have to do to justify the C-Corp managing investments? Um, you have to run the corporation like a corporation. What does that mean? You have to have annual shareholder meetings. Some corporations don't do much. So it's not, not too crazy on that one. Um, LLCs provide, so Sharon's asking, is the LLC similar to putting investment in a trust? Um, no. Depending on the trust, you can do an irrevocable trust, but an irrevocable trust, what that does is it takes away your access to the principle of the investment. So that means if you invest a million dollars and you put it in an irrevocable trust, you can have an income benefit. So if the million dollars is making you know 10% a year, you're getting a hundred grand a year but you can never touch the principal. So the million dollars is locked up for future generations or however you set up the trust. So no, the trust doesn't quite do that. And if you put it in a revocable trust, like a living trust or a personal property trust, those are revocable, meaning essentially you own them still the same as if you owned it in your own name legally. The trust would help with maybe some some anonymity things, but not really with the legal protection. So an LLC is much, much stronger than, well, infinitely more strong than a revocable trust. And an irrevocable trust kind of ties your hands, where if you invest a million dollars through an LLC and you need that million dollars to buy your favorite attorney a Bugatti, I mean, you can take it out and buy Preston a Bugatti. Anyway, it's not enough for a Bugatti, a million dollars, but just as an example. Um, can money from bank savings account be put on a Roth IRA trading account? Um, so your IRA is subject to the limits, right? So you can put whatever the limits are, it was 6,500 right now. Um, and that can come from anywhere, but you just can only put the maximum amount. Uh, I have a client at Anderson, would my senior advisor get the answers about that? Uh, Joyce, yeah. Talk with your senior advisor. You could submit it through the Platinum Portal as well as a question about the health savings account. So the C Corporation, Eric, uh, is asking, would, would he be able to put everything through a C Corp and not issue a K-1? The C Corp uh, wouldn't take all of the profits. You wouldn't want to set it up that way uh, unless you're not a very good trader. Um, with that guaranteed payment, um, because you do want some flowing through the partnership. Um, and the C-Corp doesn't issue K-1s, so it files its own, it's like its own person, right? So it's, uh, 
what's the form? I can't remember the tax form right off the top of my head for some reason. But anyway, it files its own tax, the 2280 um, tax form. So uh, life insurance is a very different topic, the IULs. So we won't cover that tonight. Can the corporation take the same expenses? Uh, so the corporation... the can do any expenses for the directors, which is how you get the accountable plan. And it's not, it's not based on what the corporation is doing. It's the corporation has to have the money to reimburse you or it can give you an IOU. Um, but yeah, a corporation is a corporation as far as the tax code goes and as far as the reimbursements show. So uh, should I convert my multi-members? Uh, I'm assuming an LLC to a C-Corp, um, maybe. Isaiah, maybe it depends on your situation and what's going on and who the members are and why you have it set up. So really, I can't tell you on that one. Sorry. Uh, when you set up an LLC and C Corp says partners, how is it different than a C Corp owns the LLC? Ah, very good question. That's a great question. So let me jump back here. Are we on the whiteboard still? Um, all right. So if we have a C Corp, and we're just going to do it all in red so I don't have to change colors. So we have our C corporation. And really, the way we're talking about setting it up is we have an LLC here, taxed as a partnership. One partner is here, and one partner is you. Okay. So the LLC is taxed as a partnership. So uh, this is a 1065 partnership return. Okay. So there, and you set this up, it could be, you know, you own 90%, the corporation owns 10%, okay, of this partnership. Now, if you do a corporation, owning an LLC, 100% of the income flows down to the corporation, and is on the corporate tax return. So you'd pay that 21% flat tax at the corporate rate for any profits. And the dividends, again, would flow down to you and you'd pay tax again. So that's that double taxation. So really the better structure is this partnership structure, unless you're significantly high into the 37% tax bracket. And then maybe it makes sense to just use a corporation. And we could talk again more about that uh, individually. All right. I'm going to jump back over to my slides here. We have a couple more to go and uh, we're getting towards the end, which is, I like to talk a lot. All right. So we're going to move on to this. One. Okay. So we talked a little bit about taxes. I do want to touch on crypto really quickly um, because it's taxed a little bit differently. It's treated as a commodity, but then mining is treated as active income and there, there's all kinds of crazy little nuances when it comes to cryptocurrency. So if you're looking at the cryptocurrency world, it's important to have this in mind, okay? So if you're trading, it's traded like a commodity, like if you're trading orange juice or pork bellies. So uh, every time you make that trade, if it's for a profit, you have capital gains. If it's for a loss, you have capital losses, okay? If you have a year-long hold or longer, then you can go into long-term capital gains versus short-term capital gains. Um, so that's how the trading is treated. It's really just like if you were trading, like I said, pork bellies or orange juice. It's a commodity. Now, We'll talk about the regulations or we won't have time tonight, but anyway, um, mining is a little bit different. So mining actually has two taxable events. So if you jump into the mining world and, are start, and start mining any cryptocurrency, you have two events. When you receive the token as the reward for mining, and that's how it works, then you receive whatever the token is worth at that time at the fair market value. So let's say you receive you know, one Bitcoin and it's $34,000. You have $34,000 in regular income. And if it's not set up correctly, it could be subject not only to income tax, but self-employment tax. And the kicker is, let's say that you sell it tomorrow for $35,000. Now you also have another $1,000 in short-term capital gains. So there's the two taxable events. So you have to be very careful. 
And if you do jump into the mining world, I highly, highly recommend talking to a professional, a tax professional or an attorney that knows what they're talking about to make sure that you are set up the best for you. I have about 20 miners. I invested way too much money right at the top of the market in them. So I am depreciating the mar- uh, the miners against the income. And I, sh- I have shown a loss for the last year. For me, a partnership is great, but maybe that's not the right structure for you and depending on your circumstances. So be careful. Now, a lot of people are like, well, hey, you know, I found this vendor and they're just going to take my Bitcoin. Um, so I get, you know, a hat. If you spend your Bitcoin in exchange for goods or services, it's as if you sold it at that instant and realized any gain or loss then. So be careful with that because if you start spending Bitcoin, as far as the IRS is concerned, you're selling it at that moment and you might have hundreds of transactions to go back through and track for capital gains versus capital losses. So be careful. One great thing about crypto, we've seen We've seen it time and time again where it's really high and then it crashes 80%. There is no wash sale rule in crypto, meaning you could realize a loss at the very bottom of the market, sell it and buy it back the next minute and there's nothing to stop you. You can't do that with stocks. You have to wait 30 days. But in crypto, you can do it so you can realize those losses because there's no wash sale rule. I think it's an awesome thing. All right, Sharon, uh, I am going to address this, and I think it's a great question. So how does the new federal law in 2024 eliminating anonymous parts of LLC in Wyoming and other states affect current discussion? It does not eliminate the anonymity. You just have to disclose it to the federal government because they want to avoid money laundering and they want to um, avoid tax evasion. Federal government, this is not going to be a public list. Yes, you will have to disclose the ownership, the ultimate beneficial ownership of LLCs to the federal government, but it is not a public list. So anonymity is still important because attorneys like me that want to sue you and take away your stuff, you want to make it as anonymous as possible. And we won't have access to that federal list. Just so you know. Uh, Medicare, Medicaid, look back protections. That's a whole different topic. Kirk, and we just do not have time for that tonight. Um, it's a five-year look back period. If you're thinking about doing an irrevocable trust to ha- live on Medi- Medicaid, let's have a discussion because I don't know about you, but I don't want to live on a Medicaid standard of living. I'd rather spend every dollar I earn to make sure that I live the rest of my life in, in comfort as opposed to that. I've seen some of those facilities. So, uh, What is mining, Wanda? We don't have time tonight, but basically it's running a computer system for the reward of crypto. That's mining. Um, but we'll do, we'll probably do a crypto video. I think we have enough questions on that for sure. So uh, benefits you have to loan against your Bitcoin. Yes, Jill. God, that, what a great question. I love this question. Um, when you take a loan and use your Bitcoin as collateral or your stocks as collateral or your house as collateral or anything that you own as collateral, there's no, there's no income there. You're not realizing income. You're not selling it. You're just taking a loan against it. So yeah, I mean, that's a great way to do it. There's a guy named Michael Saylor. He owns like $4 billion worth of Bitcoin. And he's like, if my company ever needs it, I'm just going to take a loan against it. I will never sell. It's a fantastic idea. Keep it and just take out a loan against it. Just like your house or your stock portfolio. It's awesome. How active do you have to trade to justify the corp management invest uh, managing investments? Uh, Cal, that one again, you don't have to. It doesn't have to be super active. If it makes financial sense for you to have a corporation to write off those expenses and you have a guaranteed payment to partner from your LLC that's holding your trading account, as long as it makes sense, it, you do not have to be very active. You just have an, have an agreement and run the corporation like a corporation having annual stockholder meetings, and that's it. Not too crazy. Has Anderson ever had two two of our clients sue each other? Probably. Not that I know of. Uh, Well, generally when it gets into that, it's like two partners that don't want to be partners anymore or married couples. Um, But yeah, I mean, that kind of stuff happens, but not over anything that we set up. So, all right. 
yeah, you don't want to be an active trader, right? So active trader status is very difficult. And that's why we're looking. And that's why we say use this type of structure, because this type of structure here gets you all the benefits of act active trader status, plus all the tax benefits of this corporation, right? So it's actually better to do it this way than to try to do active trader status, because Active trader status, like I said at the very beginning, is not something that's actually written in the tax code. It's come down through court-made law, and you have to be very active. It has to be a substantial part of your income. It has to be continuous and ongoing, and you can't have long hold holding periods. So maybe you want to hold Coca-Cola forever because it just keeps paying better and better dividends, but well, I... I held it for a long time. And now the tax guy is going to say, well, you held Coca-Cola for too long. So now you don't qualify as an active trader. So um, yeah, it's much better to do it this way than do that. How many trades do you have to have? Jesse, is that for the corporation? I'd say a couple a year, like you're totally fine. Uh, active trader is like 750 trades. It's like four to six trades per trading day. And you can't do them all at the beginning of the year and take the rest of the year off. It has to be continuous and ongoing throughout the whole year to qualify. So really like if you're thinking about it, talk to a professional, make sure that you can do it. All right, I got to move on here. Um, we're going to do back to this. Okay. All right. Scammers. They're out there. They're everywhere. Oh my gosh, they're everywhere. So be very, very careful. Um, I, while I was at the SEC, I saw people invest in precious metal funds and it was a giant Ponzi scheme, but we let our greed get in the way of reason. So be careful. So my general rule is if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Even in the crypto world. Now, you might get lucky and put all your money on that one spot out of 10,000 that actually pops, and, and that's okay. But if somebody comes to you and says, hey, invest, and this, this is a, a case, well, a client of ours at Anderson that this happened to. Somebody came to him and said, hey, invest $20,000 in this crypto. I guarantee it will go up. You can watch it go up on our app that's actually on the app store, and you can watch your investment increase in value. Fantastic. He does. $20,000. It goes up, goes up to $800,000. He's like, I just struck it rich. I made a ton of money. And he's like, hey, I want to withdraw to cash because I have bills to pay because I used my last $20,000 because you guaranteed me it would go up and it did. And they're like, great, fantastic. We will totally release these funds as soon as you pay us a 20% tax. They're asking for more money in before they will release his investment out, his gains. It's totally a scam. It is like one of the oldest scams in the book. Don't fall for it. Be very, very careful. Use reputable exchanges, whether you're investing in stocks or crypto. Make sure that you're not listening to somebody on Reddit or somebody that DMs you somewhere saying, hey, I have the best investment ever. Be careful. Now, I put a couple of uh, websites up here, investor.gov, that's for the SEC. They have all kinds of cases, so you can read through it what's going on now. And then the other one is a California site for a bunch of crypto scams. Now, unfortunately, they get caught and put on here. So until they get caught, they're out there scamming people and it happens all the time. So be very, very, very careful. Um, I hate watching people lose money. Uh, make sure you do due diligence. The one scammer I was talking about just a second ago, I went to their website. It didn't say what country the, the business was formed in. It didn't have any legal disclosures. Its terms of service were like two paragraphs long. It was obviously a scam set up very, very quickly. They can close it down just as fast and they're going to leave with the guy's money. So be careful out there. It's really important. All right. The next thing, what good is all this money if we don't have someone to give it to, right? Um, again, if you're going to use it to live off of and live a nice lifestyle for the rest of your days, that's great. But if you have something left over, you need to have a plan. Super like setting up a plan is the foundation. So if we're going to look, I'm going to look at my messy chart over here. Nope. Where is it? There it is. Okay. Instead of you, we're not going to, 
we're going to have this foundation of a living trust. This should own everything and tell you and your, well, tell your heirs and dependents and trustees how to handle your property when something happens. None of us are getting out of this world alive. Something will happen. Uh, so having a solid plan in place is very important, especially if you're investing in crypto, because most crypto exchanges do not have a beneficiary designation. Your stock trading, Ameritrade account will, but most crypto exchanges don't. So if you put your crypto account into an LLC that's owned by your living trust, it's taken care of. You don't have to worry about a beneficiary uh, designation, just so you know. And we're getting a little short on time, so I'm going to jump back to the slides. I'm not going to hit that one too hard. But make sure you have a plan. Very important. I have seen families torn apart over $30,000. In the grand scheme of things, it's not very much money. But people, but if you have mixed grief with greed, people get nasty. So don't let them get greedy. Tell them what they get. It's the best plan. All right. With that, we have like three minutes left, so I'm going to try and jump through some questions, but uh, our, our offer tonight is for you guys, and it's completely free. If you have heard something that you think, oh, I need more clarification, or you don't know what your, how your plan is set up, all you have to do is go to this link. You get 45-minute free wealth planning blueprint consultation from one of our senior advisors, senior strategists, or one of our attorneys, including me. And we'll set you up. We'll talk with you about your specific situation, what you have going on, and how we would set it up for you. It's no obligation, completely free. Like I said, it's 45 minutes. We'll draw out a blueprint, much better than the one that I drew tonight, because we'll use a computer and I won't, we won't worry about my artistic skills. But that's what we're doing. Just, hey, you know what? We have some expertise. We can help you, depending on your specific situation. You just go to this link. 45 minutes, well planning blueprint. It's an amazing opportunity to figure out your way forward. Um, and so with that, and so if you like it, I put some you know crypto in the background because I am the crypto guy, um, but there is a QR code. So if you're sitting at your computer and you have your cell phone next to you, that's my kids from a long time ago. Um, but if you have your cell phone next to you, turn on your camera, Scan that QR code that's right in front of you, and it'll take you right to the registration page just to sign up for that 45-minute strategy session. Um, but yeah, let's jump into questions. I'll try and close out the night. We got a, a few more minutes anyway. Uh, why should you not put it into a trust? Any major do's, don'ts? Uh, depends on the trust, right? Again, if it's irrevocable, it takes away your access to your capital, right? So you have to be careful. Other than that, having your LLC's own your trading account and your LLC owned by your trust. That's the great way to do it. So I have a brokerage account in my LLC. Awesome, Cal. It's managed by a financial advisor. Can the management fee be deducted through my C Corp? Yes. Yes. You can hire a third party to manage your actual investment account. And as long as your LLC is set up as a partnership with a guaranteed payment to the corporation, the corporation can deduct the fee that your manager charges. So the corporation's actually not managing your money. It's, it's a partner in the partnership. It's fantastic. It's a great idea, Cal. Absolutely. Uh, Kirk, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming tonight. If you're not already with Anderson, sign up for a consultation. Maybe you'll get on my schedule. I don't know. Uh, I worked tracing crypto due to scams for five years. Not only are they scams, but the scammers are scamming people charging. Yep. <laughs> Kathy, there are scammers everywhere. It is so crazy. So you have to be so careful in the crypto world. But I don't want to scare you away from it because like I said at the beginning, Bitcoin is up 100% year to date. 100%. What other investment in 2023 is up 100% right now? I don't know of any. I'm sure there's some other alternative coins, altcoins out there, but Bitcoin's a big one. Uh, can I reverse the Bitcoin gains on coin tracker to my bank account and have it go to my wallet instead? Um, 
So Sasha, if you're taking physical custody, if that's the question, then yeah, your coin tracker, I'm assuming that's like a, an accounting software that tracks the movements, the sales and the capital gains. So if it's going from like your trading account to your hardware wallet, there's no realization of gain there. So that's a great idea because you don't want to realize that capital gain, right? Does the protection start as soon as the LLCs are set up? As soon as everything is in the LLC, that's when the protection starts. So we could set it up. And I have a client that I worked with uh, and she was on the real estate side. She had 20 rental properties, all paid off. We set up 20 LLCs for those rental properties. She never deeded the properties into the LLCs and one of the properties burnt down and she didn't have insurance. So now all 20 of them, because she never moved them into the LLCs are at risk. Same kind of thing with your trading structure. Uh, yeah, I can go back to the scam links right here. So investor.gov, that's the SEC site for you guys. It's fantastic. Um, it just talks about all kinds of ongoing cases. And if you're really interested, um, I worked some of them and it really is interesting what people come up with. And a lot of the scammers don't think they're scamming. That's the scary part. A lot of the scammers think they're doing great and it's going to be a fantastic investment for everyone until they sit across the table from the SEC attorneys and then they start crying in their Cheerios. I've been that, I've watched it. It's yeah. Anyway. Uh, what tax benefits? Okay. We already talked about the tax benefits of the loan. Can I use a C corp? Even if I do not have active trader status? Yep. Absolutely. That avoids it. $250,000 uh, portfolio with bonds and stocks needs an LLC. Also, can it be an S corporation? So C versus S that depends on your specific circumstances. Should you put 250 K into an LLC? If you want to get it out of your name and protect it from you, I would. If you have $10,000 in an investment account, maybe not worth it, but 250K, probably. How do you take my name off of the LLC? Uh, so Wyoming doesn't report it publicly. In fact, they don't even collect it. So that's why we like Wyoming so much. Um, so it makes the LLC anonymous. Uh, the rental properties, I currently own a few rental properties. Would it be better at LLC or C-Corp own all or each LLC own one property? So one property per LLC, the C-Corp would not own any real estate. We generally don't recommend that except for very small circumstances. Um, so the corporation would manage uh, your properties. And we can talk more about that in a consultation. My situation is real estate deal. The buyers breached and are suing me for breach. Yeah. Um, welcome to the world right now. Again, everybody's trying to get rich by suing somebody else that they think has money. Good real estate attorney on that one. The C Corp pay for your earnings and expenses to eliminate the double taxation. Is it not an expense uh, account only? So the to eliminate double taxation is you set up the partnership to have the guaranteed payment to partner for whatever you need to pay your expenses. And that way everything's expensed out of the corporation. The idea would be to get the corporation down to $0 income, to have enough expenses that it offsets every dollar of income. So it takes a little bit of thought and planning ahead. Uh, planning on renting my house to a short-term rental in the summertime. The house is owned by an LLC. What's the best structure for this? Short-term rentals, depending on your average number of nights, might jump over into the active income side. Um, definitely talk with an advisor about that, especially if you're only going to do a part of a year. Um, you might need to set up some sort of like tenant in common deed agreement. Um, and again, that's for a topic for a different night for sure. Uh, would you speak to what to do when it's too late here, the defendant? There's not a whole lot you can do if you're already in a lawsuit because anything that you owned at the time that you reasonably expected a suit is at risk. Uh, medical reimbursement, uh, I think we covered that one. Can money from a bank uh, savings account be put on a Roth? We already covered that one. If I have no intention of taking it, we covered that one. When you set up an LLC and a C-Corp as partners, how is it different? Oh, we covered that one. Um, 
So Isaiah earlier asked, where's my tax disadvantage if my structure currently has my holding company as a multi-member LLC, owning my LLC for trading and real estate investment? Um, so if your investments are held in a disregarded entity down to a partnership, um, it's just a little bit different, but it just means that all of the partners in that partnership. So if it's like you and a spouse, it's probably great. Um, but you guys would get K ones that would report on your schedule E on your 1040. Um, so that's okay that way. It's just, you have to understand that if an LLC is owned by a partnership, all of the partners have an equal or have access to that money because it's going into that partnership. So just be a little careful, but as far as taxes go, it's fine. Uh, on the legal side or the um, distribution side to partners, just be a little careful on that. Uh, can a court pay for medical supplemental insurance? Uh, generally, a corporation is going to do a reimbursement um, because if you get a corporate paid plan, they're significantly more expensive. Um, you can get a group health insurance with as little as two people if you find the right broker, but it's generally very expensive as compared to an employer sponsored plan that maybe a spouse has or one that you can get on the healthcare.gov marketplace. Um, do we have a hard stop time, Kendall? I, I'm not sure. We're a few minutes past. I'm okay staying if there's a couple more questions. No, no people asking questions. We've still got a few more. If it's, it's really, I appreciate your time. So it's up to you, but Fantastic. Thank you for taking questions. Yeah, for sure. Um, I will try, we'll stay maybe until 740 and then I got to get home. You know, the kids, right? They want to see their yep. dad. They do. They do. <laughs> They're teenagers. They kind of want to see their dad. Kind of. Yeah, depends on the day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the wife might not want me to come home. She's like, I'm sick of you. I see you all day, but uh. yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, material participation versus, uh, in short-term rental versus long-term rental better for taxes. Um, that is a very deep question. Honestly, for that one, you should go to our tax and asset protection workshop on a Saturday or come to the three-day event and listen to Clint Coons' presentation on that. He just really nails it down and talks about it, um, for like an hour and a half really. So that, I mean, it's a big, big topic. Um, so yeah, definitely hit up the three-day event or one of the Anderson tax and asset protection events. If I move my current investment to LLC, will that result in a tax event? Oh, great question. Uh, no, because it would be a contribution from you to your business and that's not taxable. In fact, distributions are not the taxable event. So let's say that you have an investment account and you have $100,000 and you want to move it into an LLC. No problem. You contribute your account to the LLC. Great. And then you're making some trades and you do really well and you've made $20,000 in profit um, by trading or dividend distributions to that LLC's account. Well, that $20,000 is your, your taxable income and that's going to flow down anyway. Um, but if you wanted to take principal out, you can move money back and forth. That's not the taxable event between you and your LLC. The taxable event is when the LLC actually realizes income. So if we're talking about a rental property, uh, it's when you receive the rents. A lot of people think like, oh, I'll just leave the money in the LLC and it's not taxable. That's not a correct way to look at it. It is taxable as soon as the LLC realizes the income. Uh, just so you know. Uh, sure, Kirk, you can ask for me. Uh, my schedule is very full, but sign up and, and you can ask for me and we'll try and squeeze you in. I'm probably about three weeks out right now on appointments um, just because it's busy and that's a good thing, but it is busy. So is there a video that we've done where it speaks more in depth about the C-Corp having a partnership and expensing a management fee? Yeah, so Toby did one, um, Michael. Toby did... Toby's YouTube channel is just completely full of amazing tax strategies. Um, so you can definitely check that out. You can also check out my video with Toby on crypto. That was fun. It's only about 15 minutes. So if you're interested in more crypto stuff, check that out. Um, Brent, I'm not sure a 199A qualify stock trading or crypto. I'm not sure what that is. Maybe a tax form. Uh, Virginia business, which includes, I think we did that one. 
Okay. Um, this is a good question. Changing an LLC from either disregarded or partnership to S corporation tax filing status, you actually do have to file a form with the IRS. It's like 8830 something. Um, you can Google it, uh, but there is a specific form that you have to file with the IRS. And there is a, an election deadline every year, and that's in March. I think it's March 15th. I think it's the corporate tax deadline um, to file that election. Now, the IRS does allow a late S election. Um, you can really do it anytime during the calendar year. And I have seen it done as late as when you file your tax return. Uh, but that is very late and you should have a very good reason or the IRS can deny it. So now you won't be able to just do it through TurboTax or H&R Block or something. You have to file that form. How do you fund your revocable living trust with crypto? Um, I think I covered that one a little bit on Coinbase. Okay, um, so if you're holding if you're holding any kind of digital assets on most even large exchanges, Binance USA, Coinbase, Kraken, any of the big crypto exchanges, they're not going to allow you to name a beneficiary. So to get it into your living trust is difficult. That's why you should have a uh, the account owned by an LLC, which is owned by your living trust. That is the absolute easiest way with to avoid probate. Otherwise, unfortunately, there's no way to move title of that account into your living trust. You could try an assignment, but I don't think that would hold up. Um, I think that any kind of challenge and an assignment is going to go out the window and it's going to go through uh, probate. So, my recommendation, hold the trading account in an LLC that's owned by your living trust. Um, the same as if you, if you take physical custody of your crypto um, and, you know, like this isn't my actual hardware wallet, but hardware wallets are the size of my iPad or AirPod case. They're very small. They're USB drives. Um, if you take physical custody, you should have your LLC by the device and then make an on-chain transaction to the device to make sure that your LLC owns it. And if that went over your head and you're thinking about crypto, set up an appointment, <laughs> scan that QR code, set up an appointment and we'll talk about it. Um, but yeah, you wanna make sure and get it into your trust. Hey Preston, while you're, while you're looking at those, I just wanna jump in a little bit. So I did put the link in the chat. So if you do wanna click, it is directly clickable or with your camera and you can scan it and uh, jumps right in there. But guys, we, we really do this for a reason with Anderson and, and Preston specifically. That's why we had him come on and dress, address crypto and different forms of investing that is more prevalent and will be more prevalent, frankly, as the years go by. It just will. People are making good money in it. It's an alternative investment that's becoming more mainstream. Uh, I don't know about NFTs, but uh, crypto probably. So <laughs> no comment from you. <laughs> Did you see my eyes go shifty there? <laughs> I couldn't believe that one. Anyway, so uh, guys, we're super excited about uh, Preston's uh, presentation tonight. Seriously, uh, Preston, thank you very much. Yeah, it's been um, it's been fantastic. Thanks for having me. Yeah, good questions, guys, and and we we do really. Uh, some of you had questions about the consultation and what goes on during a consultation. Preston, maybe you can address a little bit what happens, but guys, they really are there to help you. We have sent several clients over, over several years, decades, over 20 years to Anderson for a reason, because they're very good at what they do. And we found over and over again, there's, and I've noticed Preston has touched on this point. There's not really a boilerplate, one size fits all type of answer when it comes to your personal finances, taxes, and legal advisory. We found that out maybe a couple of decades ago, we used to do some of that. We had forms, Great, it worked, but things have changed quickly and you don't want to mess up what you're doing, how to fund it. You, Preston just mentioned funding your, your, your crypto, putting it into an LLC and properly funding a trust. It's not simple as just retitling always. So you want to make sure and do that right. Uh, Preston, maybe address what happens during a consultation if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. So uh, our consultations, we set aside 45 minutes and what we do is... And, and well, let me just switch over really quick. We're, what we do is we really sit down with you to decide what, where are you currently? Where do you want to go? And 
and we break up your assets into four quadrants in the personal. Um, these are like your safe, your real estate investments and any active businesses. And what we do is we take those and we set up a blueprint structure similar to the one, you know, we drew out here that might be more or less complex. And we say, Hey, as far as asset protection and tax planning purposes, this is the way we would do it. Um, and, and it really is just a conversation. It's an exploratory, like, Hey, you know, you know, does this sound good to you? This is how we would do it, but that's not always the right way. Not, not everybody loves us. I would say most people, but not everyone. Um, but yeah, and it, we just talk through it. And if it's a great fit, then we help you set up your structure along the way. Um, but there, yeah, there's no obligation. You just talk to us. We'll sit down and, and see what you have going on. So um, yeah, it's really my mentioned- favorite part of the job. I love that. See, some, somebody mentioned, well, it's just a sales pitch to get me to sign up for services. Well, of course, we want your business, but we Anderson does a great job of earning the business because, guys, they're not your traditional law firm. You go down and use your brother-in-law's firm or the corner law firm. They do so many things. Every attorney thinks they can do an LLC. Well, just like a doctor, you know, you don't go to a doctor for a stomach problem with a headache. You know, you just don't do that. It's very, very different. And they are specialists in what they do in this type of law. And we found over the years, guys, we really like Anderson because they actually do it right the first time. Rather than your brother-in-law, yeah, they might have been less expensive maybe. Maybe they maybe they just a couple hundred bucks to set up an LLC on, online. You can find them out there, guys. But you're hey, there is a price to that too. <laughs> and, we, and you find it all the time, Preston. You got to redo those. I'm pretty sure that's what happens a lot. Oh yeah. We have clients that come to us that have set up their own LLCs. And and let's be honest. I mean, I could go to the Secretary of State website right now and register an LLC in Utah for, I think it's 60 bucks. Easy. Yeah. That part's the easy part. The important part, the part that we're excellent at is setting it up the right way with the operating agreement that's solid. You know, we're bringing in 25 years of experience to drafting those operating agreements. You know, one you download off Legal Doom is like 12 pages. <laughs> Ours are like 37 pages to begin with. So uh, th- there's a bit more to it. You know, steak and potatoes, right? McDonald's well, hamburger, you- steak and potatoes. <laughs> yeah. If you've got millions of dollars in real estate or even just one property, you know, with the you know, a couple of ten thousand dollars of equity. Well, you want to protect that. It's worth money to you, and so it's worth finding the right people to do that. And we find we're very confident with Preston and Anderson Advisors. We love them and uh, we appreciate it. Preston, you want to take a question or two, and then we'll wrap it up. Yeah, I don't see too many more questions, so that we haven't addressed. Okay. Um, so yeah. All right. Let's see, we covered it. Well, guys, great questions, Preston. Again, thanks for time here. Your wife and kids, thanks for sparing you tonight. We we appreciate you very much. We we might have spared them, right? So I'm gonna go home and be like, did you get this done? Did you get that done? You know, the dad stuff, right? So yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Good luck then. Yeah, have Thanks a great night, days. everyone. It was my pleasure. Hope to talk with you soon. Hey everybody, sign up for a consultation with Preston. You can tell good guy, great teams, they're happy to help you. Thanks again for your time tonight, everyone. Have a great night. 